Hey everybody, uh, I want to do a review of this past week, uh, basically from the 19th uh, all the way to 22nd, um, and just kind of look at what the details have been um, for this past week. So if you look at just this past week, we've basically been on two major levels here, uh, primarily uh, up above here around this uh, 38.76 level. Um, and then we dropped uh, down quite significantly um, here uh, on the 21st um, down to about uh, 37.77. So, so one interesting thing you can do is kind of zoom out and look at partially last week as well um, and you can start to see some of these days where we did quite uh, drop uh, into this level of the 38.75 level um, kind of back into uh, 915 uh, and so on so uh, those days kind of dropped us down into a uh, lower level here um, so overall we're talking about a pretty steady drop since about 817 or so um, and you can just see we dropped here all the way down into uh, 907 and then kind of had an upward phase and then followed by a pretty steep downward phase. So this drop was actually pretty significant, maybe even more significant um, than the recent drop that we just saw. So that one was on uh, 9013. So uh, one interesting thing is prior to this week, um, we did have quite a upward trend uh, started. Um, and then kind of into the uh, 913 day, you can see that we started to drop very significantly. Um, so but you can see that that actually started to turn around. There was just a drop, um, drop into here, and then we kind of hit the bottom of that drop, which was a MACD, uh, at least from the technical analysis. You can see that this is the lowest level that we can possibly get to. Um, so there may be some uh, upward trend here that we could expect just because of the lowness of the MACD. Uh, technical analysis. So on the force of these downward trends, you can see that um, you know from 913 that was pretty severe. Uh, 916 was also very severe, um, but it didn't have the double pressure that uh, you know we saw in 913 and 914. So um, basically, that really those combined days, um, and then in 915 and 916, you can see right into here, um, basically that uh, the, this was pretty bad. Um, this was pretty much. Uh, the worst that we've seen in quite at some time. Um, so I really like the average true range indicator just to tell me approximately where we're headed day by day. So you can kind of see that, um, you know, the, the average true range was quite significantly higher um, back in this, you know, this, this, this era here. And we're kind of heading into another perhaps uh, pretty fast changes. Um, now, if that's going to be down, um, that's another question. So, um, there's not a whole lot more down that we can go. Um, I mean, we can go back into COVID land, um, which is basically starting around here. Um, and that would be a drop of uh, another, let me see, get a percentage here. So if we were to head back to COVID land, we're gonna have to be about a 13% drop uh, from here. Uh, so. That's quite significant. Um, I don't know if we're gonna see that um, really soon, but it's possible. But if you look at this chart here, you can kind of see that the average true range has been accelerating a little bit and we might even see um, perhaps some more negative times um, coming up um, with this uh, volatility basically increasing um, to uh, this level right in here. So in terms of money flow, we do see a kind of a fast money flow going out of the market. Uh, starting here around 817 um, and then really just dropping uh, significantly and then money coming back into the market uh, more recently uh, from 901 September 1st to September 12th you can kind of see some uh, money flowing in there so that that really did help a lot um, but then there was just the drop afterwards um, so does that look as significant <coughs> we'd have to measure that um, you can measure it here and say this drop from here to here. Um, so that's basically about 40.43. Um, and then we're looking at 0.25 drop here. So 
uh, still there is not a whole lot more lower that we can go so you can say that the money flow could not go lower than this which is about 0.34 so if there was a drop that we did see um, in terms of money flowing out of the market that probably happened uh, already um, from back here from 816 so from a pure money flow technical analysis standpoint we can say that approximately you know we're looking at a lot of money flowing out of the market from COVID land um, it doesn't get worse than that um, and certainly uh, on an average indicator we could say that uh, by the end of this month somewhere uh, around that time we should start seeing money flow back into the market um, but uh, maybe not before that so it looks like you know approximately uh, 10 3 or something that's about two weeks or so from now um, and then on this chart we can see that we might hit uh, a lower level you know a drop of another uh, say 4.5 percent or something like that so let's head back to the futures market here really quick just to see um, what's going on with uh, the the regular S&P December contracts so uh, as we zoom in here and we start to look at this past week um, you can start to see um, basically that this downward trend right here was very significant um, at least uh, on the MACD so you can see there's nothing that shows up even close to as bad so we should have hit you know maybe around in this level uh, which is a negative seven, the seven or eight um, at most for the MACD um, but we hit you know into the 20s which was quite an incredible drop and the really unbelievable thing is that you know back here on uh, 913 we hit a drop of negative 30 so you know we're really talking about some pretty significant drops um, these two drops right here were very significant um, for the history of what's been going on uh, for the S&P 500. So not only has the average to range been accelerating, uh, but you can also see volume has kind of been uh, building up here. We got uh, just today, uh, you know, different 15-minute uh, intervals that were quite high uh, for the volume. And here's what a volume oscillator looks like from a technical analysis standpoint. I can make this a little bigger, kind of see. Um, so I added a moving average on top of that, um, so you can kind of see uh, basically what's been going on. But one interesting fact, um, you know, these contracts have been switching over, so basically, uh, you know, it's not. Uh, this is the December S and P futures, um, so you can see that it kind of did change a little bit. In terms of recently, like we did see not a whole lot of price action here, but we did see quite a lot of volume, uh, at least on the downward side. Um, so in general, I've been using this uh, volume oscillator to help me uh, decide when to trade or when not to trade. So when it's above zero, um, those are good times to trade. That means the volume is quite active um, and there's just more trading going on. So those are the best times of the day. And then the moving average crossovers can just help a little bit more to tell you uh, maybe more details about certain parts of the day like even here you can see that this is pretty good until about the zero line crossover so right in here that's when it started to be not as good to trade so you can get some very fast uh, moves here uh, so I really like the cleaner volume oscillator it gives you some idea of positive and negative volumes um, and you can see for the past four days uh, right in here we got quite a bit of positive volume um, so that was pretty much the best time of the week was right uh, uh, Monday the 19th here. You can see that was pretty much the positive um, day uh, for us. And then after that, you can see uh, right into here, 930 open. You can see that this was kind of negative volume followed by positive volume kind of in the midday uh, and then some more negative volume into the afternoon and then some positive volume right at the end of the day, but still closing uh, a little bit lower here. Uh, so surprisingly, you can see that this volume hit about 19.2, and then this was down here 21. So kind of gives you an idea that this uh, negative part was quite a little bit, little bit more worse than uh, this positive part at the end of the day. So I'd say Tuesday was Tuesday the 20th was a pretty important day uh, in terms of studying the rest of the week. You know, we got pretty good sizable negative volume here, pretty good positive. Give us the hint that perhaps the rest of the week after Monday wasn't going to be so great. Um, and you can even see in here, you got a negative 17, which was basically 
uh, even higher than the positive volume that you got on the second leg here. And you can kind of see with the regular um, days that this was pretty much a lot of negativity uh, heading right into here. And it was just until about 2.15 that we didn't have anything looking very positive. Uh, there's this little section in here that looked good, but you can see the volume was dropping overall. So even though you had positive volume, it was just middle day and the volume was going to drop off anyway. But sometimes you get spikes like right in here, you have a positive spike of volume that was greater than the negative spike, which maybe gave uh, two candles a positive uh, volume in there. Uh, so perhaps one of the more interesting days uh, in terms of volume was just this uh, day on the 21st, uh, just yesterday, um, and that was this Fed speech, and you can see uh, we did start kind of the day a little bit negative here, but then things started to go positive, um, and then the volume just kind of tapered off, and then uh, suddenly around 2 o'clock when the... Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, interest rates were released, everything just dropped. So that did quite a big serious drop. Um, and that pretty much the Fed speech was uh, after that. And then things started to go up during the speech. And then just a lot of trading near the end of the day here, um, almost more than the uh, start of the day. You can see that uh, that things got uh, pretty good and hot, uh, positive. Uh, and then just really started to drop. Uh, somewhere around here three o'clock or so and then just really dropped so you see the volume kind of stopped at a 405 um, four o'clock uh, and then just keeps into the after hours kept dropping uh, getting more and more negative so on the average range you can see that we're kind of dropping here uh, up until the fed speech and then just a uh, wham hitting really a lot of volatility um, and then actually kind of increasing in volatility here, except for this last part of the day. Um, you can see uh, this is extended hours after hours though. So on the force index, you can see that we just have lost a lot of the force that we saw uh, yesterday, uh, today. And you kind of see when you measure this, uh, you get negative uh, about 500K. And then here we got almost a million uh, so basically it's about half the force uh, that we saw yesterday. The only slight bad news is on the positive side, um, we did see some positivity today. Um, we're a little bit under this positivity that we saw um, just before the Fed speech on Tuesday. So uh, the 20th, I believe. And when you compare that even as far back as Monday, you can start to see that even Monday was a little bit more positive. Um, I guess that would be uh, kind of expected. It's way before the speech, way before the interest rates released and all that. So uh, so what should we expect in the coming uh, days or possibly week? So we really shouldn't see too much more negative volume, much more negative than we, what we have seen um, this past week. So we can't really, <clears throat> if you look at the past here for the SPY, um, you know, the, the most negative volume we've seen uh, is around uh, 200, negative 220 million. So shouldn't be too much lower than that, which is what we are at right now. So at least on the daily chart, um, we're looking like we should start to see some positivity coming in here uh, pretty soon. We could maybe see at worst 30. So that would be like maybe another couple of days of really down. We might see like some good and some bad, um, but heading a little bit lower um, here. Now the MACD signal doesn't look as good as the volume indicator, a uh, volume oscillator. Um, you can see here that MACD could get a little bit lower. Um, it looks like it's not really turning around yet. Um, this usually, the histogram usually shows we did have a little bit of a turnaround on the 21st. Um, but after today, um, it shows that there wasn't really any turnaround. Um, and you can also display this as a candle chart. Um, and this looks even worse on a candle chart. So uh, basically, uh, you know, and let's just go back to volume really quick. So on the volume side, we do look a little bit more positive. So there is some possibility for a turnaround um, when you compare a clear volume oscillator versus the MACD. Um, now on the force index in the next week, you know, we're, we're pretty much at the lowest that we can get. We don't have a whole lot of more releases, um, uh, you know, but basically 
the, in terms of data from the government. One of the main problems though, however, is on the average two range. So basically volatility is really high and it looks like it is kind of increasing here. Um, maybe just recently dropping uh, this past day, uh, but certainly it looks like it's increasing since uh, the 24th or so. Um, so if it, if it ends up in this territory, that means we're still gonna see some down days uh, to come. So the next couple days could be down days um, heading into the 30th here, um, at least uh, next week. So uh, the good news is that the volume looks like it's been slightly increasing. The bad news is that it's also been decreasing since the 14th. So volume in general is good for the stock market. Um, you can see that uh, you do have some downward trends, uh, even in despite, uh, you know, higher volume. It just means that there's more people interested in the market um, and things like that. Um, so it is kind of a debate. Um, you can see, uh, you know, that's not always the case, but in general, volume is good for the stock market. So on the main volume graph, you can see back here, COVID land. Uh, and then we kind of dropped into lower volume levels, uh, kind of had a couple peaks and valleys in here, and then more recently um, saw some uh, high volume right near the, after the peak. So actually the volume kind of confirmed that there needed to be a drop um, right in here, although we did have a pretty positive day. Looks like right in here, it just doesn't show up too clearly um, because it's so uh, detailed with each, pixel but you can see that near the bottom here it was a pretty high positive volume and it looks like another positive volume one right in here as well so perhaps my biggest concern is just seeing the widening gap between the MACD here the indicator you can see that uh, the histogram is still red as soon as it turns green that means there's going to be uh, uh, closing closing up between the signal line and the MACD line so that kind of a convergence and then heading back up positive so because we're still in this negative land doesn't look good. We don't even see a turnaround yet, which is not a good sign, uh, at least on a technical analysis for MACD. Now, one of the reasons that the volume oscillator is turning around is because the volume is dropping here on the negative side. So if the volume was increasing, the volume would be uh, kind of switching around. So you can see on a clinger volume oscillator that you do have a green candle here. And that's primarily because you still have negative volume, but the negative volume isn't as bad as it was the day before, for instance. So uh, that shows you, you can see you can see some positive volume into here uh, and then some negative and then actually even though it's still negative, a little bit of positivity um, towards the positive side. So that's maybe a little bit of hope uh, on the volume side. And because we have lower volume, we also have lower force in general. So it is still negative. Um, you can see down here um, and we uh, basically should be heading back up here so pretty soon on our overall force index. Anyway, I hope you've really enjoyed the study of the stock market. Please uh, like and subscribe. Um, just click the like button there and subscribe and I'd be glad to talk with you more about some ideas uh, that you might have on how the stock market's going. Um, there's a lot of different technical analysis to use. Um, I use MACD, Klinger, Elder Force Index, Twigs Money Flow, Average Two Range, Volume Oscillators, and Regular Volume. Um, and basically I also just do uh, a lot of support and resistance and trend line analysis as well. So, uh, but there's a lot of different things you can do. Hopefully this has been helpful um, to kind of get some uh, basics for how the uh, technical analysis works on the S&P 500. Thanks again. And let me know if you have any questions. I'd be glad to try to uh, talk with some ideas with you about the stock market. See you.